Hello, I'm Denise Lamman, your host for Chamber Chat. Please join me today when my guests will be Roger Golden from Golden Engineering, Nancy Burkhart from Nancy's Fancy Sewing Corner, and Stacy Asbury from the Chamber of Commerce. Hi. Hi. How are you today? Fine. Good. Thanks. So we're going to talk a little bit about Golden Engineering. And your company just intrigues me because when I found out what you did, I was just surprised that we had that located here in Wayne County. So let's start out with a little bit of the history of Golden Engineering, and then we can move into you telling us exactly what, what happens out there. Okay. Well, um, the company started in 1973. My dad started it, John Golden. And it started not here, it started in Ann Arbor, Michigan. And he was, a, um, he was an engineer. He worked for a company called Bendix Aerospace. And um, well, what we do, we make portable x-ray machines. So he was an engineer for them, working on an x-ray project. And he left that company, designed his own x-ray, and um, or made some changes to the design. Mm -hmm. And um, he started the company in his garage up in Ann Arbor. So, he had no intentions of doing that, never wanted to have his own business, but he just saw the management of that company. They did a lot of, it was in the late 60s, early 70s, so Bendix did a lot of um, lunar projects in aerospace, mm -hmm. and the government was starting to, to not fund that anymore, so Bendix went into the, they made an x-ray and he was on that project, and he's like, this isn't going to last very long. And he was right, he left, and uh, he had a machine shop that he had already started. So he just, like I said, he made some changes to the design and he started making them out of his garage, so. So he seen an idea and was proactive with it and, <coughs> and it became Golden Engineering? Yeah, um, yeah, he just, he was a little angered at what had happened and he wanted to prove that I can do this and um, I don't think he ever had any idea as far as what it would turn into. Um, so that's how it started. That was, again, 40 years ago. Um, we moved, so we were in Ann Arbor. The company was in Ann Arbor. So how did you end up in Wayne County? Yeah. Well, that's... that's <laughs> that, uh, that's a little distance yes, there between yeah, Ann Arbor and here. <laughs> it is, and he didn't just take a dart and throw it on there. Um, my mom had grown up here in Greens Fork. Ah. So I was born in 67 in Detroit, downtown Detroit, and they saw all of the riots and things that had happened at that time. And my dad, he had grown up in Lafayette, and he kind of wanted to get away from the big city. Um, seeing that what wasn't good. And then also you're competing with the auto industry as far as high labor costs. And yeah. he wanted to get back to, you know, rural, more rural Indiana. So. 1980, 1980 is when we moved down here. So the company was seven years old. And um, it was, I mean, it was a difficult start, like any startup business. It was mm -hmm. very difficult at the beginning, but by then it was going fairly well. And um, it's been a great, it's been a great location. Um, you know, it's much more convenient as far as to airports and UPS is just a few miles away, so shipping our product is easy. And we don't do business, we do business internationally a lot, well within the US and outside the US. So where we're located isn't extremely important as far as like customer base. Ah. So it's more important actually to be closer to ways to ship the product out. And so, so the Wayne County works for that. Yeah. And then you also get to be close to family and have a smaller community feel than Detroit or up in Ann Arbor in that area. Yeah, exactly. So. And yeah, and actually when um, back in the 70s in Ann Arbor, that's where University of Michigan is, but where we were, there wasn't a lot of place, places to expand to for small businesses. And um, there, there really, to grow, there wasn't, there wasn't a place to do it that was very convenient up there. So. We moved down with aspirations of building, and we rented um, the Greens Fork schoolhouse, and there was, I think it was an old uh, fire station there. It was across the parking lot. Uh -huh. So we rented those two buildings for about 10 years, and then we built where we are, uh, which is Centerville Road in 70. 
So, so you've put your roots down and they've gone deep. That's neat. Yes, yeah. So, all right, you mentioned that you do x-ray x-ray machines. Yes. So tell us a little bit about actually what you do and what you build okay. and what you do with them. Okay. <laughs> well, this is what we build. This is We build four models right now. So this is uh, one of our more popular models. And this is a, a battery pack that's made by Black & Decker. It's a DeWalt battery pack. So this same battery pack can be used in a drill. You buy it at Lowe's, Home Depot. Um, and you're taking, so this is, it's, it's battery powered, you put the battery in, it produces x-rays that come out the front of the unit. Um, so similar to a dental x-ray, medical x-ray, um, it would look the same, I mean it's doing the same thing. The output is? Yeah, the output is very similar, but it's a very small package. Yes, this is not the, what I think of when you say x-ray machine, this is not what I think of. Right. You know, we go into have an x-ray of our chest or our right. leg or something, and even the portable ones are rolled in and they're huge. Right. So this is not what I think of when you say x-ray machine. So this is pretty cool. Right, yeah, most, <laughs> most people don't. And that this, so this one weighs um, 12 pounds, and we have another one that weighs 12 pounds. This one will go through a half inch of steel. Wow. Um, we have one that'll go through two inches of steel that weighs 22 pounds. It's also battery powered. We have a five pound unit that will go through a half inch of steel as well. So it has the same penetration as this. Okay, so you're saying that it'll go through steel. Why does why do we need to know that it's gonna go through steel? What, what are we x-raying that? Well, steel is, um, it's fairly consistent it's used for a lot for industrial applications. So when in an industrial application, they're looking at tubing, okay. uh, steel pipes. They're looking for welds. If there's a break in the weld or pitting in the weld, sometimes they might be looking at wall thickness. Mm -hmm. So steel is just a, it's like a standard. Um, it's also used for security applications. And in that, they could be looking at a briefcase, a backpack, uh, a box. So they would use something like this for that stuff too. Did, Correct. I think at one time you said they use them at airports. Did you tell me that? They do use them at some airports, probably within the U.S., maybe a dozen or so airports, and then overseas, I don't know, they, maybe 20 more airports. It's not usually the primary tool that's used, um, but when you hear, if you're traveling and you hear, don't leave your baggage, well, if, if you do, <laughs> unattended. Yeah. Yes, right. Don't leave your baggage unattended. Well, if you do that, and it seems highly suspicious, then they don't want to pick that up and bring it to uh, one of the big X-rays. So they'll take this and they'll just take a picture of it where it's sitting. So, who exactly are your customers? Well, our biggest customer is the U.S. government, um, and then we sell about thirty percent overseas. So it'd be to various government entities overseas, all over. We sell South America, Far East, China, wow. Australia, Middle East, um, Europe. And it kind of, you know, Europe was strong 10, 15 years ago. They've kind of died down a bit. Uh -huh. China, we weren't selling much to 10 years ago. Now we sell quite a bit to China. We've been selling a lot to Russia. So. And so they use this these machines for all kinds of things. Yeah, like in Russia they use it a lot on their, um, they have a lot of gas lines, um, you yeah. know, the petrochemical industry, so mm -hmm. they have to service those and that's what they use it for. That's pretty neat. Mm -hmm. um, how many people do you employ? Uh, we have 25 people that we employ now. It, it, so they're all local, right? They, yes. You know, Yes, we had brought one person down. Well, one person that worked up in Michigan had moved down and worked here for a while. Um, but yeah, right now everyone is fairly local, Wayne County, um, Cambridge City to Richmond, basically. Well, we thank you for being one of those employers. Um, it's really neat to have someone who does, or a company that does what you do, 
located here in Wayne yeah. County. It's it's just intriguing. And yes, I know that uh, you said that some people think what you do is secretive. Maybe it's because you do things for the government. <laughs> <laughs> well, we just don't, since we don't do a lot of business lo locally, we don't advertise. There's not really a reason for it. So people may just kind of wonder, well, what's that building over there? And we don't have a big sign that says this is what we do. And so. Well, now the people and the public will know if they watch this program. All right. So I want to thank you for being a guest on Chamber Chat today and sharing a little bit about what you do. Well, you're welcome. Thank you, Roger. Yep. Thanks. Joining me now is Nancy Burkhart from Nancy's Fancy Sewing corner. Thank you for joining me today. Let's start with talking just a little bit about the history of the sewing corner. Okay. Um, we started 11 years ago uptown um, on the corner of 10th and Main and uh, I never thought I would be selling sewing machines and vacuums <laughs> and uh, my daughter said to me, what are you thinking? And I said, well, you know, you're going off to college and your brother will be going off to college. And I had been doing um, craft shows and the opportunity arose and Wayne Bank gave me a loan and I so started. did you purchase a company or did you start this company? On no, I started it. Um, and I had owned a Janome sewing machine for several years and had been around the reps and things like that. Uh -huh. And so I just acquired the um, Janome and Brother and then the Recar vacuum cleaners. And So you knew that brand and you knew it was good right. and that's what you wanted to, exactly. to sell. Exactly. So, and so. you, so you have the Janome and the Brothers, and you have quilting machines, embroidery machines. What, right. what is your specialty? Our big specialty, I would say, is embroidery. And we um, have an embroidery club, and we sell a lot of uh, embroidery designs. Uh -huh. And um, But we're starting to get more into quilting, and we've started a quilting club called the Strip Club. Ooh, that so, sounds fun. <laughs> you know, I put that on Facebook. I get a lot of oohs and ahs. So <laughs> I did see that when I researched your your um, website that you had a strip club listed. Uh -huh. I was going to ask you about it. Yeah, several of our customers, their children have said, you're going to a strip club? <laughs> but uh, Maybe we should explain exactly what strip quilting is. Well, it's just a form of quilting, and you just take your... Um, strips that you can buy or you can um, just take scraps and make them into strips and you can make all sorts of things. So we thought that was kind of a cute name and it would, you know, um, entice people to come. <laughs> yes, and, definitely. Uh, we've been very successful with our clubs. Um, they pay a dollar to come in for the uh, strip club and then they get a free pattern and uh, we have door prizes and just have a and lot of fun. How often do your um Clubs Do they meet. meet? The clubs meet? We meet for the Embroidery Club. It is the first Monday and, no, it is the second Monday and the third Saturday every month. Uh -huh. And the Strip Club is the first Wednesday and first Saturday every month. Ah. And so uh, each club, like if you come to the Monday Embroidery Club, the Saturday Club will be the same stuff. Okay, so you actually have two opportunities to hit the same right. club. Right. And did I hear you say you're on Facebook? Yes. So they can follow you on Facebook mm -hmm. too. I didn't know that you had a Facebook. I'll have to go yes. and search for you and see what you've got up your sleeve. Mm -hmm. and we also have a, a website and which is Nancy's Fancy Sewing Corner dot com. That's that's where I found the information about the strip club. <laughs> okay, all right. And uh, so, um, and then we also sell vacuum cleaners. I don't think a lot of people know that you carry right. a, a, a high-end vacuum cleaner. Or a, I don't know if it's actually a high-end, but it's not a department store brand. Correct. And so tell us a little bit about the vacuums. Um, the Recar has been around for over 50 years, and it's sold in specialty stores like ours. Mm -hmm. And um, it's a very high-quality product. And 
Uh, we also sell the bank, which is, uh, I believe it's a fairly new vacuum, but it is also made in the United States. And they're both wonderful products. And uh, my husband is the repair man. So he's there every day. He's there. And he has very good hours, I might add. But, uh, <laughs> Anyway, so we do service what we sell, and I believe we're about the only one around that works on the vacuums. And you also carry, um, do you, you carry bags and you carry belts, but for, for more than just the two, the uh, vacuums that you sell, right. right? Because I think I've seen that you have Kirby. Correct. The Kirby products also, and mm -hmm. then I bought my vacuum from you when you were selling Auric. Uh -huh. So you still carry the Auric bags and belts also, correct? Yes, and we also work on the Oryx. Okay, he so he, you work the Oryx. on mm -hmm. So that's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. um, I know, let's let's go back to the sewing okay. because that's kind of at my heart. Um, when you buy a machine from your store, there's something that you offer that a lot of people um, need from time to time, and that is help. Right. <laughs> When you buy a machine for us, you become our customer for life. As long as you own that machine, we're there for you. And, you know, if you have a question six months, a year down the road, can't remember how to make a buttonhole, you just let us know, come in. Uh, we always give everybody, we ask that you call ahead of time, and then we give you like an hour's lesson at your convenience. And we figure after that, People are kind of brain dead, so an hour is about <laughs> all you can, you know, handle. But uh, no, that is where we strive is our service. And my girls are very knowledgeable. And uh, if, especially Emma, if she doesn't know an answer, she will find that answer for you. That's neat. And yes, uh, yes your ladies that work there um, also, right? They all own probably one, one or more of your machines. Probably more. And <laughs> yeah. And you're pretty crafty yourself. You said you started doing craft shows, but mm -hmm. I've been in there, and you turn out some really amazing pieces, yeah, both on the you. embroidery and on the quilting side. Uh, right so. now I'm into making granddaughter dresses. Oh. So, but, <laughs> and we do, we sell fabric now. Uh, we also have a large variety of patterns. And you carry the, um, the electronic embroidery programs too, yes, correct? Yes, the software. So, mm -hmm. so you cover, you offer both the thread, the programs, the material, anything that they need. Right, notions. They, yes, mm -hmm. they can get patterns, everything they can get mm -hmm. from, the, so you're a one, one stop if they want to come in. We try. <laughs> we try. We do have uh, a vast amount of patterns from uh, clothing to crafts, um, quilting. Uh, we have a whole wall of patterns. And those, you get new ones in all the time, yes. don't you, along with mm -hmm. your material? Yes, we do. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, do you try them all out before you uh, sell them, or? We do try and do as much as we can, but we have so many, there wouldn't be any way we could get them all done, but we do try and uh, have examples there for you. And we also can help with patterns sometimes, you know, if you have a question. And then we also um, do embroidery for people. So if you want a name put on a jacket or, oh. or on a bag, we're kind of busy this time of the year because people, you know, uh, for holidays or graduations, they want to put them on towels or tote bags, and so uh, for gifts that they're giving away right, for all right, kinds of things. Right, we have a it's a home machine embroidery machine, but it has six threads on it, six needles, and so it does a very nice professional job. Nice, and um, I think you you. Pardon me. You sell the sewing machines and you sew, sew embroidery machines. You also sew, sell sergers, correct? Yes. Mm -hmm. So you carry a, a line of that. And right. um, tell us a little bit about the difference between a serger and um, you can do just a, a lot machine. more with a serger than most people think. Uh, you can put in a zipper. 
There's just a lot of things, but it is a nice tool to go with your sewing machine. It finishes edges. That's the unique part, is yes. that it actually cuts and finishes an edge, right? Correct, correct. And But you can make piping with it. Uh, it's unlimited. And there, that's a good point, too, as far as our classes, because people aren't used to sergers. And so we, if you buy it from us, then we will teach you how to use it. Ah, that's cool. And um, you talked about your couple the embroidery club and the quilting club. Mm -hmm. Do you have any classes that you actually do um, teaching on how to sew or? Um... We've had them in the past and we're trying to start that again. And we're also going to be starting a new club and that is the cutters. Now a big thing is um, these cutting machines. Uh -huh. And so we have uh, one that is sponsored by Janome, which is a Cameo, and now we're carrying the new Brother Scan and Cut. And that is one of the first ones on the market, I believe, that will actually scan something and you don't need a computer with it. Wow. And we've etched glass with them and cut vinyl with them and uh, they're pretty... Well, technology is everywhere. Yes. And, and yes. so it's even hitting our sewing machines and our, yes. our uh, machines that we do that type of thing on. Mm -hmm. Well, you are full of information and if they have any questions, I'm sure they can stop out at your place, which is Nancy's Fancy Sewing Corner. And I really appreciate you being on the show with us today. Thank you for having me. Joining me now is Stacy Asbury from the Chamber of Commerce, my co-worker and my partner in crime. Hi, Stacy. How are you, Denise? <laughs> I'm pretty good. Good. We've got a lot of things going on that we're excited about, we don't do. we? We do. January is a busy month. We have our largest event that you've been busy working on all year long. Yes, that's our annual dinner. I know, and we're excited to announce our keynote speaker this year will be... Mike Pence. Yes, <laughs> yes, and that event is on Friday, January 24th, so we hope to see you all there. If you have any questions about uh, coming to the dinner, you can call the chamber at 9 9621511. Yes, and probably any of us can answer their questions or at least get an answer and get that get back with them. That's correct. So <laughs> I do I would like to point out individuals can buy tickets. I've already had a couple questions as far as if you have to purchase by table only. That's a good point. And I think it's important that people know that they, they can come, their whole company doesn't have to come with them, so they can call right. and inquire about questions. Right. But that's also the event that the chamber gets to shine at. And I like to point this out because it is important. The chamber does a lot of things in the community and in, in all of Wayne County. And that's our night to shine. That's we correct. give our awards out for um, that we give out each year. And we have several that, that are done annually. Mm -hmm. And then we always have a couple that are a surprise. Mm -hmm. But that's our night to shine. That's the Chamber's night. And I think that's why it's so well attended and um, it's so important to the public and to us. That's correct. So that's one thing that people don't think about. We work all year mm -hmm. to help our members and to help the community. And we, get, we do get one night to, to shine, shine and to show off what we have been doing. It's a fun night. So, and the impact that the Chamber has mm -hmm. on the community and so yep. that gets to be highlighted also. That's correct. We also have um, something else that's happening in the community yes. that is really big this year. It's the first annual ICE, ICE Festival. festival. Yep. I think they're, they ca are calling it the Meltdown. That's correct. And that'll take place the following weekend. Um, there will be events scheduled Friday and Saturday. You can find them on Facebook and Twitter at Meltdown Richmond. And um, it'll culminate with the Ice Wars on Saturday. Oh, that'll be cool. And, and those dates, the date for that um, event is actually January 31st. That's correct. And February 1st. Yes. yes. Right before the big game. Uh, what big game? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. People just talk about it. Oh. <laughs> well, and then the next thing that we have on our calendar actually comes, starts in February, mm -hmm. and, and that'll be our Chamber Network Nights starting back up. Yes. And um, we don't have one in January because of the annual dinner, but in February we have a Chamber Network Night scheduled with the Holiday Inn. That's exciting. And that's on February 13th. Aww. So just one day before 
that sweetheart day. Yes. <laughs> so it'll be easier. It will be easy to remember when it is. That's correct. And that should be interesting. I know that a lot of people have not seen the conference room and the um, setup out there. They need to go. Yes, it's very interesting. Beautiful. What else do we have? Oh, something else we should let the the people know uh -huh. and, and everybody watching is Seth, our intern, which you've seen on the last segment yes. or on the last taping. Um, who was our intern for a little bit over a year, is no longer with us, but we do have a new intern. We do. And her name's Kelsey, and so at some point, the, the viewing audience will be seeing her. They'll be able to meet her. Yes, <laughs> and so watch for her when she'll be tagging along with one of us, either Amy or you or myself, yep. and um, so you'll have to look for an opportunity to meet her. And we'd like to congratulate Seth on his position. He was fortunate to be offered a position right out of graduation yesterday, this year, at West End Bank, and we're very excited for yes, him. Yes, he was excited too. Yeah, he, he did stop in yesterday, <laughs> and he looked very sharp in his new suit. Yes, so. he did. Well, thank you for joining us today on Chamber Chat, and I hope that you learned something that you hadn't known before.